conditional execution is a way for you to execute uh, tests only on certain situations, only on certain uh, scenarios. So there are a bunch of conditional execution uh, annotations that come out of the box. I'm not going to demo all this stuff. This is fairly obvious, but I just want to point it out because this has come in handy. Um, and I can see why this would come in handy. Uh, there is enabled on OS is one of those conditional annotations. You can guess what this annotation does. Stick it on top of a, a test class and that test class is going to run only on that OS, right? OS.Linux. There's also OS.Mac, OS.Solaris, OS.Windows. So you can have your uh, test enabled only on that. Can you guess what the behavior is on the other operating systems? It is disabled. So it doesn't again show that it's successful. You will see that, that gray thing saying this test is disabled. It's kind of equivalent to doing disabled, but only on certain scenarios. Uh, there's also enabled on JRE. This is also super handy because you have uh, you have certain language features that work only uh, with certain JREs. There's also enabled if and enabled uh, if system property, uh, enabled if environment variable. These are things which let you control uh, from outside what tests you want executed and uh, during which times, right? So let's say you have uh, tests that you need to run only on certain nodes in your build system and not on certain other nodes. You can set a system property there and say, okay, run only the dev tests, run only the uh, the prod tests, you know? You, there are ways in which you can control that. There is also a tagging mechanism that, that I'm gonna tell you, which is, which is another way in which you can selectively run certain tests, but this is also something that you might see in the wild, so it's good to know. Uh, there are other ways in which you can handle external factors, and that is, using assumptions, all right? So let me actually show you that. So here, I can say, enabled on OS, and then there's gonna be OS dot, you see here, these are the operating systems, right? So let's say I use enabled on Linux, and now when I run this, this is not going to run, all right? So it's going to be disabled. Let me quickly show you that and I'll tell you what the difference is with the uh, assumptions. So you see here, this thing got skipped, just like the disabled here. So it's kind of disabling based on conditions. So this is enabled on. The, there's a difference between this and what I'm gonna talk about next, which is assumptions, all right? Let me show you what assumptions look like. I'm gonna use the same method here. All right. So there is this assume that there's a method that you can run and the, these are come from uh, just like assert that, right? So you assert equals, you have assume that. So it has the same kind of structure, but it does different things. So let me import assumptions and then I'll tell you what this thing can do. So I'm going to import assumptions dot star, right? Assumptions, just like assertions, are a static import. And then here I'm going to do Oh, it's assume true, not as a assume that. All right, assume true is the method, all right? So you can pass in a Boolean value here, all right? So let's say I pass in true. So I'm basically telling JUnit, when you run this, I am assuming that this should be true. This method, this value should be true. I can pass in any value here. I'm just assuming that this value should be true when I'm running this test. So if this assumption is not correct, so whatever I'm assuming, if it's not correct, hey, JUnit, please don't run this test because this test doesn't make sense in that context. Right, does it make sense? Similar to, similar to the enable disabled, but then this gives you programmatic control. You can actually write code to figure out this value. You can have a bunch of code here which executes to say, okay, what that value is. And then you say, okay, this is my assumption. So let's say your test requires the server to be up in order to run, right? If the server is done, it doesn't even make sense to run it, right? And the server being up or down is not like a failure condition. It's like, okay, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. So I don't want my test to get dinged when the server goes down because you're running it in a test environment. Does it make sense? So in those cases, 
rather than have your test be flaky and say, okay, uh, the test failed. I don't know if it's because my logic was broken or because that external factor, which is beyond my control, went down. So for that, what you're gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna assume that that server is up and I'm gonna run this test. So if that server is down, hey, JUnit, don't run this and give me a false report because if that server is down, this test definitely does not make sense. The result of the test definitely does not make sense, right? That's assumption. It's very different from assertion. Yeah, I hope you understand this distinction, all right? So let's say I uh, figure out this, uh, let's say uh, Boolean is server up. I have some mechanism of figuring that out, right? I have some code which figures out if the server is up or not. Let's say that code, oops. Let's say that code comes back with a value of false. I'm hard coding it now, all right? But let's say that comes back with false. And I'm, I'm gonna say over here, assume true, that the server up and if the server is up then execute this test so this is what assume does it assumes that certain things are true for your test to run and uh, you want certain things on certain failures to not run the test as opposed to break the test and cause uh, problems right you don't want the test to break you just don't run the test so that's that's what assume is for